Okay, so today, after watching a few of the E39 Source videos about Ryan's car and then the Avis Blue M5 that he looked at, I thought something was weird with my navigation. And well, as you can see, this is the look of my navigation unit. DVD is what it says on it. There's my 6th CD changer and everything. And well, that was not what uh, the video that Ryan had said or showed with the regular 2000 M M5. This usually would be what a 2000 M5 would have. A Mark II it's a CD based DVD navigation system. This would be a Mark III. It's still CD based and it would be produced after 9 of 2000 to the end of 2002. And then this is the Mark IV unit for model years 2003 and beyond. That is exactly what I have right there. Now let me tell you guys, I have a, a uh, October of 99 build M5. So this is clearly not normal. And one way to check is that. Go into the setting screens and if you look at the top right corner of it, SW software 3163. Well, oh, the 3 stands for Mark 3 computer. The 1 would just stand for the higher navigation. And then the 63 would stand for the version. This is what my car has. Four, one thirty. So, indeed, I have a Mark IV navigation. The previous owner never told me about this. As you can see, I have the the bigger widescreen nav. That was a given, but that's just plug and play. And now I have a Mark IV nav, which is pretty exciting for me. And then if you go back onto this website that I'm on. It's X Outpost, it's an X5 forum, but it's really helpful with the, uh, with, what do you call it, navigation stuff. They have a big navigation database. You can see, well, not so much with this camera. If, maybe if I zoom in, it's gonna focus. But it doesn't look like it. A 4-1-30 is, uh, version 23 released in March of 04. It's one of the early Mark IV units. And while the latest unit is actually version 32, which is right here. I got the BMW TIS out. So now I'm gonna just try and see if I can update this software. Uh, version 32 into version or 23 into version 32 okay so now I'm on my Windows computer right here and my Mac right there I can't really figure out how to work my Mac yet it's still pretty new to me and I'm really familiar with this now look on this website there is version 25, 29, 30, 32. And then a bunch of others. Um, and then there's also with version 32 night mode, camera alerts, and M logo. I think I'm going to go for this one right here. It's a zip file and what I have to do with this thing is that um, I'm gonna have to download it as such. I'm just trying to get back to the page right here. And what you do is take the file, then you burn it using image burn because it's an ISO file, and then you slap it onto your uh, navigation and hopefully it will update. So version 32 with the modifications burned. And now it's time to take this MacBook Air 
out again and we will install it on my Mark IV navigation. Okay, so time for me to walk you guys through this. My steps are go to the car, open the driver's door. All right, so here we go. That's opened. Next would be to eject the DVD drive from the nav computer. Here's my map. It's a 2004 map. Alright. Um, next step, switch ignition to position 1 and leave door open. Awesome. There you go. Position one. Now it says to install the firmware disk into drive and follow instruction on nav screen. Here's my new disk. It's a CD disk, but since my Mark IV can take both CD and DVDs, no, that's not a problem. And now, follow instructions on nav screen. Um, here we go. CD, ROM, and navigation computer loading software. That's pretty cool. And people say this is going to take about six minutes. So, I will probably cut this. Nothing's happening. Oh, look. Uh, this can take up to six minutes. Don't turn off ignition during installation. Program will update. All right, so I guess it's working. Um, a little description of what I'm doing right now. I've got the car plugged into a battery tender, so this is going to trickle charge my battery. Just in case I use too much battery power while doing this upgrade. I don't think it's going to need much, but it can never be too safe. There you go. Halfway through the process. Language is USA. Oh, uh, language is English. There's an English version and then there's a French version. Female voices. Application software 10.01. That would be version 32. Because once I check the new software, it's going to be Ford-1-0-0. Maybe 01. But, yep. Still working. Please remove CD and confirm with OK. So now I walk around the back. I remove the CD. It was already, they had already ejected it for me. So now I walk back into the front and confirm with OK. System will reboot now. In a few seconds, it will start up with your new configuration. Cool. Still beeping at me because the key is an ignition lock. Oh, look at that! An M splash screen. I guess it's a little cooler than just the BMW one. This system. That's your normal accept thing. Oh, look at that. Software. 4 slash or hyphen 1 slash 0 0. This is version 32 now. S screen is in split screen. Clock is there. Date is there. Nav volume is there. Color set. Uh, I like that color. You language. Distance in miles, consumption, memo on. I like the memo on. Brightness. I'll just play around with that. Now I can go back to the menu. GPS. No. Oh, oops. I'll do that later. Onboard computer. Pretty cool stuff. Menu again. 
DSP, whatever. Coding, emergency settings, monitor off, auxiliary ventilation. Alright, I'm gonna shut this off and insert the GPS CD again and I'll play around with this car some more. Alright, so this is what my GPS looks like with the disc installed. As you can see, it's only a 2D uh, view and if I go into map positioning, I can either get pointing north, where the map is always pointing north wherever I go, or the travel direction, where the map would go with what my car travels. There's an Easter egg that BMW also put in, but it's in a secret menu. So you, as you can see, you have to go into your settings and then hold down your menu button. Now you just have to hold for a couple seconds until, well, once it loads, there you go. Service mode. Then you have to scroll all the way down to perspective. And then perspective mode would be like your 3D stuff. And now, you, I turned it on. Okay, then I go back into GPS nav, it's the same thing so far, but if I go into there, click on map, map view, and I go to perspective, would you look at that, technically it's a 3D map, Oops, that's a piece of dirt, don't know how that got there, but yeah, now it's a 3D map of what I have before, pretty cool. It's a nice little futuristic update. Still on a 2004 GPS map, so it's not the most detailed thing in the world, but... Thanks for watching this E39 Source video. It's going to be one of my last few ones, since sadly I'm going to college and... I will not be bringing this little car right here. I have one more autocross vid to upload, and that would be this weekend. And then I'm going to do one more video of my final storage of this car. Thanks for watching.